So today I wanted to talk a bit about uh, spiritual bypass. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, spiritual bypass is a, describes a tendency to use uh, spiritual teachings or spiritual uh, explanations to avoid the complexities of our lives. Uh, it was a term that was uh, first coined by a, a psychotherapist named John Wellwood uh, in his book, Towards the Psychology of Awakening. And the difficulty with spiritual bypass is that it's a way of hiding behind our spirituality and not really acknowledging what it takes for us to connect with each other, but also what it takes for us to connect with ourselves. What does it mean to, um, how, how is it that if, what are the ways in which we can understand spiritual teachings, but then use them to sort of, um, shield us from things like being accountable, from things like uh, seeing harm in the world, from making real change. And also like from grieving, from being angry. Like there's all kinds of things that we are use our spiritual practices to avoid. I think that um, when I started to practice, you know, I really, I wanted it to be something that would help me not grieve, that would help me handle what felt sort of uh, out of my control but also sort of out of my ability to understand or to deal with. And I really thought that that's what we were trying to do here, especially when I started to read or look at the teachings around emptiness and the teachings around interdependence. You know, when you start to think about how it is that, you know, uh, in Buddhism, there's, there's sort of this theory of two truths, an ultimate truth and a conventional truth, and that um, ultimately we are all one, that we arise together in each moment. And then there's the uh, conventional truth, which is that I exist, you exist, we're not the same person. We have different experiences of the world. We have different social locations. We have all of this difference. But sometimes that's taught in a way that sort of prioritizes this idea of the ultimate as uh, superior to the conventional. And that liberation only exists in the ultimate, in this place of oneness. And so often when we go and start talking about this place of oneness, we also, um, it, it sort of erases our identities and our locations and our ability to connect with ourselves. And so it was a real struggle for me. I was, uh, you know, I started practicing sort of later in my life and I started to, to, I had been out for a very long time and I was really, I had finally reached a place where it was like, I was so proud of being queer and um, all of this amazing stuff that I think we as queer people have uh, offered to the world and the ways in which we've changed the world. Um, and, uh, you know, as I was really, but then I was sitting in these rooms and hear these teachers talk about how we just were supposed to let that go. And I had a real difficult time with this.
but to think that way actually bypasses, is using these teachings in a way that sort of distorts them and misses the point of them. Because the truth is, is that each of those truths, the conventional and the ultimate, arise simultaneously. And that um, they are both paths of liberation. And the tricky part is that the only way that I have seen that we can understand and get and experience moments of connecting to this ultimate, to this place of union, is by really connecting to the convention, to really figuring out how to live in my body and how to see myself and be myself, warts and all. Start to see the magic of this ex existence. You know, and in some ways, it, I, it's easy to sort of get caught up in, you know, uh, I survived the 80s and 90s. I have a ton of grief. I have a, a, you know, a few mental health concerns. And I also have physical limitations. And, you know, I could spend my time sort of ruminating on all the ways that my life is difficult. Or I can start to really begin to find ways to connect to those things as just part of my experience. These are the causes and conditions of my life. I don't have to be at odds with them. I don't have to be at war with them. In fact, they are the ways in which I find liberation. Just like I understood my queerness as as magical and beautiful, I started to understand this fat disabled body and this weird mind that has uh, thoughts that I can't always um, make sense of. But all of that is what makes up the magical and the mystical. And it's the only way I know that I've ever been able to experience this ultimate truth, this place of complete union. And the other thing I'll say about those, that connection to the ultimate is that I've never, I don't think it's a place we hang on to. That we just keep repeating the practices and we keep coming back to relationship with ourselves, and we have these moments. Uh, Suzuki Roshi used to say, there's no enlightened people, only enlightened moments. One of my favorite Zen teachers, uh, Zenju Earthland Manuel, in her book, The Way of Tenderness, talks about how it is that the places of her location how she could meet those places with tenderness and start to embrace them. My friend Rob, Rod Owens uh, wrote a really great book called Love and Rage, in which he really talks about doing the, the heavy lifting of, that practices doing the heavy lifting of really looking at and making friends with and, and loving those difficult emotions like rage and pain and loss. Not as a way to cure them, not as a way to discard them, but as a way to not be dragged around by them. As a way to connect to them and be able to uh, make, let it be a part of our life, but not the totality of our life.
so um, in his book, I'm trying to find my quote sheet here. Uh, in his book, uh, John Wellwood wrote, to transcend something is to go beyond it to the point of ceasing to identify with it so that it becomes an object of our awareness. When this process is healthy, meaning it's not bypassing, what's been transcended is not excluded from our being any more than clouds are excluded from the sky, but rather it's repositioned and related to in ways that serve our well being. That's such a beautiful way to talk about liberation. Because liberation doesn't exclude anything. And the only ways in which we can really experience liberation is by deeply connecting to ourselves, to our experiences. And, and to let those be magic, let those be beautiful, let those be uh, the gifts that we bring to the world. Thank you very much for your attention. I went longer than I intended. Um, I want to I understand if people need to go. Oh wait, do, no, we go till eight thirty, right? Never mind. <laughs> I did leave enough time. 